Ayurveda is a system of medicine with historical roots in the Indian subcontinent. Globalized and modernized practices derived from Ayurveda traditions are a type of alternative medicine. In countries beyond India, Ayurvedic therapies and practices have been integrated in general wellness applications and in some cases in medical use. The main classical Ayurveda texts begin with accounts of the transmission of medical knowledge from the gods to sages, and then to human physicians. In Sushruta Samhita, Sushrutha's compendium, Sushruta wrote that Dhanvantari, Hindu god of Ayurveda, incarnated himself as a king of Varanasi and taught medicine to a group of physicians, including Sushruta. Ayurveda therapies have varied and evolved over more than two millennia. Therapies are typically based on complex herbal compounds, minerals, and metal substances, perhaps under the influence of early Indian alchemy or Rasa Shastra. Ancient Ayurveda texts also taught surgical techniques, including rhinoplasty, kidney stone extractions, sutures, and the extraction of foreign objects, although laboratory experiments suggest it is possible that some substances used in Ayurveda might be developed into effective treatments, there is no scientific evidence that any are effective as currently practiced. Ayurveda medicine is considered pseudoscientific. Other researchers consider it a proto-science, or trans-science system instead. In a 2008 study, close to 21% of Ayurveda U.S. and Indian manufactured patent medicines sold through the Internet were found to contain toxic levels of heavy metals, specifically lead, mercury, and arsenic. The public health implications of such metallic contaminants in India are unknown. Some scholars assert that Ayurveda originated in prehistoric times, and that some of the concepts of Ayurveda have existed from the time of the Indus Valley Civilization or even earlier. Ayurveda developed significantly during the Vedic period, and later, some of the non Vedic systems such as Buddhism and Jainism also developed medical concepts and practices that appear in the classical Ayurveda texts. Dosa balance is emphasized, and suppressing natural urges is considered unhealthy and claimed to lead to illness. Ayurveda treatises describe three elemental doses viz. Vada, Pitta and Kapha, and state that equality SKT, Samyatva of the doses results in health, while inequality Vasamitva results in disease. Ayurveda treatises divide medicine into eight canonical components. Ayurveda practitioners had developed various medicinal preparations and surgical procedures from at least the beginning of the Common Era. Eight components The earliest classical Sanskrit works on Ayurveda describe medicine as being divided into eight components SKT, Anga, this characterization of the physician's art, the medicine that has eight components. SKT, Sikitsayam Astangayam Sikitsayamastangayam, is first found in the Sanskrit epic the Mahabharata, ca 4th century BCE. The components are Kayashakitsa, general medicine, medicine of the body Kaumara Bhirtya, the treatment of children, pediatrics Salyatantra, surgical techniques and the extraction of foreign objects Shalakyatantra – treatment of ailments affecting ears, eyes, nose, mouth, etc. Ent. Bhutadiya – pacification of possessing spirits, and the people whose minds are affected by such possession Agatatantra – toxicology Rasayantantra – rejuvenation and tonics for increasing lifespan, intellect and strength Vajikaranatantra, aphrodisiacs and treatments for increasing the volume and viability of semen and sexual pleasure. Principles and terminology The word, Ayurveda 
is Sanskrit, Ayurveda Ayurveda, meaning knowledge of life and longevity. The central theoretical ideas of Ayurveda developed in the mid first millennium BCE, and show parallels with Sankhya and Vicesika philosophies, as well as with Buddhism and Jainism. Balance is emphasized, and suppressing natural urges is considered unhealthy and claimed to lead to illness. For example, to suppress sneezing is said to potentially give rise to shoulder pain. However, people are also cautioned to stay within the limits of reasonable balance and measure when following nature's urges. For example, emphasis is placed on moderation of food intake, sleep, and sexual intercourse. Ayurveda names seven basic tissues, dhatu, which are plasma, rasa, blood, rakta, muscles, mamsa, fat, meta, bone, asthi, marrow, maja, and semen, shukra. Like the medicine of classical antiquity, Ayurveda has historically divided bodily substances into five classical elements: Sanskrit panchamahabuda, viz earth, water, fire, air and ether. There are also 20 gunas qualities or characteristics which are considered to be inherent in all matter. These are organized in ten pairs, heavy, light, cold, hot, unctuous, dry, dull, sharp, stable, mobile, soft, hard, non-slimy, slimy, smooth, coarse, minute, gross, and viscous, liquid, ama a Sanskrit word meaning «uncooked» or «undigested» is used to refer to the concept of anything that exists in a state of incomplete transformation. With regards to oral hygiene, it is claimed to be a toxic byproduct generated by improper or incomplete digestion. The concept has no equivalent in standard medicine. Ayurveda also names three elemental bodily humors, the doshas called vata, pitta and kapha, and states that a balance of the doshas results in health, while imbalance results in disease. One Ayurvedic view is that the doshas are balanced when they are equal to each other, while another view is that each human possesses a unique combination of the doshas which define this person's temperament and characteristics. In either case, it says that each person should modulate their behavior or environment to increase or decrease the doshas and maintain their natural state. In medieval taxonomies of the Sanskrit knowledge systems, Ayurveda is assigned a place as a subsidiary Veda Upaveda. Some medicinal plant names from the Atharvaveda and other Vedas can be found in subsequent Ayurveda literature. The earliest recorded theoretical statements about the canonical models of disease in Ayurveda occur in the earliest Buddhist canon. Topic: <laughs> Practice. Ayurvedic doctors regard physical existence, mental existence, and personality as a unit with each element being able to influence the others. This is a holistic approach used during diagnosis and therapy, and is a fundamental aspect of Ayurveda. Another part of Ayurvedic treatment says that there are channels which transport fluids, and that the channels can be opened up by massage treatment using oils and sweetana fomentation. Unhealthy, or blocked, channels are thought to cause disease. Diagnosis Ayurveda has eight ways to diagnose illness, called nadi pulse, mutra urine, mala stool, jiva tongue, shabda speech, sparsha touch, druk vision, and akruti appearance. Ayurvedic practitioners approach diagnosis by using the five senses. For example, hearing is used to observe the condition of breathing and speech. The study of the lethal points or marman marma is of special importance. Topic: <treatment>, Treatment and prevention. Two of the eight branches of classical Ayurveda deal with surgery, salya sakitsa and salakya tantra, but contemporary Ayurveda tends to stress attaining vitality by building a healthy metabolic system and maintaining good digestion and excretion. Ayurveda also focuses on exercise, yoga, and meditation. 
One type of prescription is a sattvic diet. Ayurveda follows the concept of dhinacharya, which says that natural cycles waking, sleeping, working, meditation etc. are important for health. Hygiene, including regular bathing, cleaning of teeth, tongue scraping, skin care, and eye washing, is also a central practice. Substances used Plant-based treatments in Ayurveda may be derived from roots, leaves, fruits, bark, or seeds such as cardamom and cinnamon. In the 19th century, William Dymock and co-authors summarized hundreds of plant-derived medicines along with the uses, microscopic structure, chemical composition, toxicology, prevalent myths and stories, and relation to commerce in British India. Animal products used in Ayurveda include milk, bones, and gallstones. In addition, fats are prescribed both for consumption and for external use. Consumption of minerals, including sulfur, arsenic, lead, copper sulfate and gold, are also prescribed. The addition of minerals to herbal medicine is called rasa shastra. Ayurveda uses alcoholic beverages called madhya, which are said to adjust the doshas by increasing pitta and reducing vata and kapha. Madhya are classified by the raw material and fermentation process, and the categories include, sugar-based, fruit-based, cereal-based, cereal-based with herbs, fermented with vinegar, and tonic wines. The intended outcomes can include causing purgation, improving digestion or taste, creating dryness, or loosening joints. Ayurvedic texts describe madhya as non-viscid and fast-acting, and say that it enters and cleans minute pores in the body. Purified opium is used in eight Ayurvedic preparations and is said to balance the vata and kapha doshas and increase the pitta dosha. It is prescribed for diarrhea and dysentery, for increasing the sexual and muscular ability, and for affecting the brain. The sedative and pain-relieving properties of opium are not considered in Ayurveda. The use of opium is not found in the ancient Ayurvedic texts, and is first mentioned in the Sarngadhara Samhita a book on pharmacy used in Rajasthan in western India, as an ingredient of an aphrodisiac to delay male ejaculation. It is possible that opium was brought to India along with or before Muslim conquests. The book Yoga Ratnakara (1700–1800 unknown author, which is popular in Maharashtra, uses opium in a herbal mineral composition prescribed for diarrhea. In the Bhaisajya Ratnavali, opium and camphor are used for acute gastroenteritis. In this drug, the respiratory depressant action of opium is counteracted by the respiratory stimulant property of camphor. Later books have included the narcotic property for use as analgesic pain reliever. Cannabis indica is also absent from the ancient Ayurveda books, and is first mentioned in the Sarngadhara Samhita as a treatment for diarrhea. In the Bhaisajya Ratnavali, it is named as an ingredient in an aphrodisiac. Ayurveda says that both oil and tar can be used to stop bleeding, and that traumatic bleeding can be stopped by four different methods ligation of the blood vessel, cauterization by heat, use of preparations to facilitate clotting, and use of preparations to constrict the blood vessels. Oils are also used in a number of ways, including regular consumption, anointing, smearing, head massage, application to affected areas, and oil pulling. Liquids may also be poured on the patient's forehead, a technique called shiradhara. Panchakarma <laughs> According to Ayurveda, panchakarma are techniques to eliminate toxic elements from the body. Topic current status based on the World Health Assembly resolution on traditional medicine WHA 62.13 compare as well the 2008 Beijing declaration on traditional medicine the WHO has established a traditional medicine strategy which involves among other complementary health systems Ayurveda 
The first previous global strategy was published in 2002 and dealt especially with herbal medicines. The current version 2014 to 2023 is beginning to consider aspects of TNCM practices and practitioners and whether and how they should be integrated into overall health service delivery. It is as well part of the 2013 WHO, WIPO, WTO TRIPS study on health innovation and access to medicines. The WTO mentions Ayurveda in its intellectual property strategy. Traditional medicine, including Ayurveda, contributes significantly to the health status of many communities, and is increasingly used within certain communities in developed countries. Traditional medicine has a long history of use in health maintenance and in disease prevention and treatment, particularly for chronic diseases. Suitable recognition of traditional medicine is an important element of national health policies and has as well important basis for new products with significant export potential. WTO, WIPO and WHO ask for respect for both the economic value and the social and cultural significance of traditional knowledge and supports documentation of traditional medical knowledge and enhanced regulation of quality, safety and efficacy of such products. The WHO paper asks to integrate traditional and complementary medicine services, where appropriate, into health care service delivery and self-health care and to promote an improved universal health coverage by doing so. <laughs> India According to some sources, up to 80% of people in India use some form of traditional medicine, a category which includes Ayurveda. In 1970, the Indian Medical Central Council Act, which aimed to standardize qualifications for Ayurveda practitioners and provide accredited institutions for its study and research, was passed by the Parliament of India. In 1971, the Central Council of Indian Medicine CCIM was established under the Department of Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha Medicine and Homeopathy AYUSH, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, to monitor higher education in Ayurveda in India. The Indian government supports research and teaching in Ayurveda through many channels at both the national and state levels, and helps institutionalize traditional medicine so that it can be studied in major towns and cities. The state-sponsored Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences is designed to do research on Ayurveda. Many clinics in urban and rural areas are run by professionals who qualify from these institutes. As of 2013, India has over 180 training centers offer degrees in traditional Ayurvedic medicine to fight biopiracy and unethical patents. In 2001, the government of India set up the Traditional Knowledge Digital Library as a repository for formulations of various systems of Indian medicine, such as Ayurveda, Unani, and Siddha. The formulations come from over 100 traditional Ayurveda books. An Indian Academy of Sciences document quoting a 2003–04 report states that India had 432,625 registered medical practitioners, 13,925 dispensaries, 2,253 hospitals and a bed strength of 43,803. 209 undergraduate teaching institutions and 16 postgraduate institutions. Insurance companies cover expenses for Ayurvedic treatments in case of conditions such as spinal cord disorders, bone disorder, arthritis and cancer. Such claims constitute 5 to 10% of the country's health insurance claims. Maharashtra Andashrada Nirmulan Samiti, an organization dedicated to fighting superstition in India, considers Ayurveda to be pseudoscience. In the 9th of November 2014, India formed the Ministry of AYUSH. National Ayurveda Day is also celebrated in India on the birth of Lord Donvantari, Donteras. In 2018, it was celebrated on 5 November. Topic: 
Other countries on the Indian subcontinent About 75% to 80% of the population of Nepal use Ayurveda, and it is the most practiced form of medicine in the country. The Sri Lankan tradition of Ayurveda is similar to the Indian tradition. Practitioners of Ayurveda in Sri Lanka refer to Sanskrit texts which are common to both countries. However, they do differ in some aspects, particularly in the herbs used. In 1980, the Sri Lankan government established a Ministry of Indigenous Medicine to revive and regulate Ayurveda. The Institute of Indigenous Medicine affiliated to the University of Colombo offers undergraduate, postgraduate, and MD degrees in Ayurveda medicine and surgery, and similar degrees in Unani medicine. In the public system, there are currently 62 Ayurvedic hospitals and 208 central dispensaries, which served about 3 million people about 11% of Sri Lanka's population in 2010. In total, there are about 20,000 registered practitioners of Ayurveda in the country, according to the Mahavamsa, an ancient chronicle of Sinhalese royalty from the 6th century CE. King Pandukabhaya of Sri Lanka reigned 437 BCE to 367 BCE, had lying in homes and Ayurvedic hospitals, Sivikasathi Sala, built in various parts of the country. This is the earliest documented evidence available of institutions dedicated specifically to the care of the sick anywhere in the world. Mahintali Hospital is the oldest in the world. Outside the Indian subcontinent Ayurveda is a system of traditional medicine developed during antiquity and the medieval period, and as such is comparable to pre-modern Chinese and European systems of medicine. However, beginning in the 1960s, Ayurveda has been advertised as alternative medicine in the Western world. Due to different laws and medical regulations in the rest of the world, the unregulated practice and commercialization of Ayurveda have raised ethical and legal issues. In some instances, Ayurvedic practices or terminology have also been adapted specifically for Western consumption, notably in the case of Maharishi Ayurveda in the 1980s. In some cases, this involved active fraud on the part of proponents of Ayurveda in an attempt to falsely represent the system as equal to the standards of modern medical research. Baba Hari Das was an early proponent who helped bring Ayurveda to the U.S. in the early 1970s. He taught classes derived from the Susratha Samhita and the Sharaka Samhita, leading to the establishment of the Mount Madonna Institute, College of Ayurveda, Ayurveda World, and Ayurvedic Pharmacy. He invited several notable Ayurvedic teachers, including Vasant Lad, Sarita Shrestha, and Ram Harsh Singh. The Ayurvedic practitioner Michael Tiara wrote that T. He history of Ayurveda in North America will always owe a debt to the selfless contributions of Baba Hari Das. In the United States, the practice of Ayurveda is not licensed or regulated by any state. Practitioners of Ayurveda can be licensed in other healthcare fields such as massage therapy or midwifery, and a few states have approved schools teaching Ayurveda. Topic. Classification and efficacy Although laboratory experiments suggest it is possible that some substances in Ayurveda might be developed into effective treatments, there is no evidence that any are effective in themselves. According to Cancer Research UK, no significant scientific evidence has shown effectiveness of Ayurvedic medicine for the treatment of any disease, although massage and relaxation are often beneficial for some cancer patients and there are indications from animal studies that some herbal products used in Ayurveda might be explored further. Today, Ayurvedic medicine is considered pseudoscientific on account of its confusion between reality and metaphysical concepts. 
Other researchers debate whether it should be considered a protoscience, an unscientific, or trans science system instead. A review of the use of Ayurveda for cardiovascular disease concluded that the evidence is not convincing for the use of any Ayurvedic herbal treatment for heart disease or hypertension, but that many herbs used by Ayurvedic practitioners could be appropriate for further research. Research into Ayurveda has been characterized as pseudoscience. Both the lack of scientific soundness in the theoretical foundations of Ayurveda and the quality of research have been criticized. Research In India, research in Ayurveda is undertaken by the Ministry of AYUSH, an abbreviation for the Department of Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha and Homeopathy, through a national network of research institutes. In Nepal, the National Ayurvedic Training and Research Center (NATRC) researches medicinal herbs in the country. In Sri Lanka, the Ministry of Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine looks after the research in Ayurveda through various national research institutes. Use of toxic metals Rasa Shastra, the practice of adding metals, minerals or gems to herbal preparations, may include toxic heavy metals such as lead, mercury and arsenic. The public health implications of metals in Rasa Shastra in India is unknown. Adverse reactions to herbs are described in traditional Ayurvedic texts, but practitioners are reluctant to admit that herbs could be toxic and that reliable information on herbal toxicity is not readily available. There is a communication gap between practitioners of modern medicine and Ayurveda. Some traditional Indian herbal medicinal products contain harmful levels of heavy metals, including lead. A 1990 study on Ayurvedic medicines in India found that 41% of the products tested contained arsenic, and that 64% contained lead and mercury. A 2004 study found toxic levels of heavy metals in 20% of Ayurvedic preparations made in South Asia and sold in the Boston area, and concluded that Ayurvedic products posed serious health risks and should be tested for heavy metal contamination. A 2008 study of more than 230 products found that approximately 20% of remedies and 40% of Rasa Shastra medicines purchased over the Internet from U.S. and Indian suppliers contained lead, mercury or arsenic. A 2015 study of users in the United States found elevated blood lead levels in 40% of those tested, leading physician and former U.S. Air Force flight surgeon Harriet Hall to say that, "...Ayurveda is basically superstition mixed with a soupçon of practical health advice. And it can be dangerous." Heavy metals are thought of as active ingredients by advocates of Indian herbal medicinal products. According to ancient Ayurvedic texts, certain physico-chemical purification processes such as samskaras or shodanas for metals detoxify the heavy metals in it. These are similar to the Chinese pao ji, although the Ayurvedic techniques are more complex and may involve physical pharmacy techniques as well as mantras. However, these products have nonetheless caused severe lead poisoning and other toxic effects. Between 1978 and 2008, "...more than 80 cases of lead poisoning associated with Ayurvedic medicine use were reported worldwide." In 2012, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC linked Ayurvedic drugs to lead poisoning, based on cases where toxic materials were found in the blood of pregnant women who had taken Ayurvedic drugs. Ayurvedic practitioners argue that the toxicity of basmas comes from improper manufacturing processes, contaminants, improper use of Ayurvedic medicine, quality of raw materials, and that the end products and improper procedures are used by charlatans in India the government ruled that ayurvedic products must be labeled with their metallic content however in current science a publication of the indian academy of sciences ms valiathan said that 
The absence of post-market surveillance and the paucity of test laboratory facilities in India make the quality control of Ayurvedic medicines exceedingly difficult at this time. In the United States, most Ayurvedic products are marketed without having been reviewed or approved by the FDA. Since 2007, the FDA has placed an import alert on some Ayurvedic products in order to prevent them from entering the United States. History According to modern Ayurvedic sources, the origins of Ayurveda have been traced to around 6000 BCE when they originated as an oral tradition. Some of the concepts of Ayurveda have existed since the times of Indus Valley Civilization. The first recorded forms of Ayurveda as medical texts evolved from the Vedas. Ayurveda is a discipline of the Upaveda or auxiliary knowledge. In Vedic tradition, the origins of Ayurveda are also found in Atharvaveda, which contains 114 hymns and incantations described as magical cures for disease. There are various legendary accounts of the origin of Ayurveda, e.g. that it was received by Danvantari or Devodasa from Brahma. Tradition also holds that the writings of Ayurveda were influenced by a lost text by the sage Agnavesa. Ayurveda is one of the few systems of medicine developed in ancient times that is still widely practiced in modern times. As such, it is open to the criticism that its conceptual basis is obsolete and that its contemporary practitioners have not taken account of the developments of modern medicine. Responses to this situation led to an impassioned debate in India during the early decades of the 20th century, between proponents of unchanging tradition Sutta, pure Ayurveda and those who thought Ayurveda should modernize and syncretize Asuta, impure, tainted Ayurveda. The political debate about the place of Ayurveda in contemporary India has continued to the present 2015, both in the public arena and in government. Debate about the place of Ayurvedic medicine in the contemporary internationalized world also continues today 2015. <laughs> Main texts There are three principal early texts on Ayurveda, the Sharaka Samhita, the Sushruta Samhita and the Bela Samhita. The Sushruta Samhita is based on an original from the 6th century BCE, and was updated by the Buddhist scholar Nagarjuna in the 2nd century CE. The Sharaka Samhita, written by Sharaka, and the Bela Samhita, attributed to Atreya Punarvasu, are also dated to the 6th century BCE. The Sharaka Samhita was also updated by Dhritabala during the early centuries of the Common Era. The Bauer manuscript includes of excerpts from the Beta Samhita and its description of concepts in Central Asian Buddhism. In 1987, A. F. R. Hornley identified the scribe of the medical portions of the manuscript to be a native of India using a northern variant of the Gupta script, who had migrated and become a Buddhist monk in a monastery in Kucha. The Chinese pilgrim F. A. Xian c. 337–422 AD wrote about the healthcare system of the Gupta Empire 320 and described the institutional approach of Indian medicine. This is also visible in the works of Sharaka, who describes hospitals and how they should be equipped. Other early texts are the Agnivsha Samhita, Kasyapa Samhita and Harita Samhita. The original edition of the Agnivsha Samhita, by Agnivesa, is dated to 1500 BCE, and it was later modified by Sharaka. Kasyapa Samhita includes the treatise of Javaka Kumar Bacha and is dated to the 6th century BCE. While Harita Samhita is dated to an earlier period, it is attributed to Harita, who was a disciple of Punarvasu Atreya. 
Some later texts are Astanga Nayantu 8th century by Vagbhata, Paryaya Ratnamala 9th century by Madhava, Siddhasara Nayantu 9th century by Ravi Gupta, Dravyavali 10th century and Dravyaguna Sangraha 11th century by Kakrapanidatta among others. Topic: <laughs> Illnesses portrayed Underwood and Rhodes state that the early forms of traditional Indian medicine identified fever, cough, consumption, diarrhea, dropsy, abscesses, seizures, tumors, and leprosy, and that treatments included plastic surgery, lithotomy, tonsillectomy, couching a form of cataract surgery, puncturing to release fluids in the abdomen, extraction of foreign bodies, treatment of anal fistulas, treating fractures, amputations, cesarean sections, and stitching of wounds. The use of herbs and surgical instruments became widespread. During this period, treatments were also prescribed for complex ailments, including angina pectoris, diabetes, hypertension, and stones. <laughs> <laughs> Further development and spread Ayurveda flourished throughout the Indian Middle Ages. Dalhana, Florida, 1200; Sarngadhara, Florida, 1300; and Bhavamisra, Florida, 1500, compiled works on Indian medicine. The medical works of both Sushruta and Sharaka were also translated into the Chinese language in the 5th century, and during the 8th century, they were translated into the Arabic and Persian language. The 9th century Persian physician Muhammad ibn Zakariya al Razi was familiar with the text. The Arabic works derived from the Ayurvedic texts eventually also reached Europe by the 12th century. In Renaissance Italy, the Branca family of Sicily and Gaspar Tagliacozzi Bologna were influenced by the Arabic reception of the Sushrutha's surgical techniques. British physicians travelled to India to observe rhinoplasty being performed using native methods, and reports on Indian rhinoplasty were published in the Gentleman's Magazine in 1794. Instruments described in the Sushruta Samhita were further modified in Europe. Joseph Constantine Carpew studied plastic surgery methods in India for 20 years and, in 1815, was able to perform the first major rhinoplasty surgery in the Western world, using the «Indian» method of nose reconstruction. In 1840 Brett published an article about this technique. During the period of colonial British rule of India, the practice of Ayurveda was neglected by the British Indian government, in favour of modern medicine. After Indian independence, there was more focus on Ayurveda and other traditional medical systems. Ayurveda became a part of the Indian national health care system, with state hospitals for Ayurveda established across the country. However, the treatments of traditional medicines were not always integrated with others. Footnotes. equals equals see also